system here. So at any point, you know, if it's sitting at home or if it's sitting in the car, I can hit that little button, the power button on the bottom of the UI handle, and uh, and it'll give me a battery indication. I just charged this thing up last night, so um, so it's good to go. Um, the charge actually lasts a long time, if even if you don't plug it in, because there's really the LEDs is the only thing that consumes battery life if you're not actually deploying it. So uh, so that I'm gonna it's gonna be a little while. You might. So that's the systems check, right? So you hold the button down for four seconds. It goes, it does the battery check, tells you what your battery level's at, and then it runs the fan 100% backwards to make sure all the resistance is accurate and everything's 100% uh, ready to go. And it gives you that green light. And that green light will pulse um, throughout the entire day. So you know that you're ready to roll, um, and there's no question in, your mind, in the back of your mind whether you, uh, you know, screwed your cylinder right, or screw the little trigger mechanism in there right, or you know whether your quick connect is uh, is frozen up. Uh, so it's going to be loud, and I'm going to try to talk through it. And if my timing's right, I'll, I'll do a pretty good job. But the first nine seconds is mandatory. You pull this trigger basically at any point when this thing's on, and you get nine seconds of full 100% power, regardless of anything else. <laughs> So for this first minute, this is like the active variable. And this first minute is basically pulsing between 100% and 50%. 100% and 50%. And basically, that, in addition to like adding duplicity to getting that volume regardless of any kind of obstructions to the intake, it's also recovering. So if I did get strained through the trees and I got a slit in the side of the bag, it's still maintaining that volume. Um, 200 meters, by the way, which is, uh, there's no reason not to go bigger. And it does this for the first full minute. And so then, after that first full minute, what happens is we just basically go into, we go into the volume maintenance. So this is kind of like we're trying to reach that CE certification. Um, of three minutes, and that's so we're just trying to maintain the volume at a reasonable <coughs> level for this next two minutes. The other thing that, that this offers up is the advantage of being able to pull the trigger and then go in and find your buddy who just got buried. If you're worried about hang fire, you can actually kind of, you know, preemptively pull the trigger and you're protected for that full three minutes. If I were at any point after that nine seconds, I can push that button back in and I can stop deployment. Um, which means basically that it, it will just, it goes back to being active and deployable and it still maintains the volume, but the fan's not running. So that's again, if I want to save the battery life or if I want to go in and rescue somebody but not have the fan running and the noise um, distracting me. If I did do that and it's still active, I could pull the trigger again and it would go right back to that nine seconds. Um, so, and, and start basically from scratch. So the goal here is the next, uh, it just keeps topping off. And then any, min any slide that lasts over a minute, you are not going to recover from regardless of an airbag or, or any sort of technology anyway. So um, minutes two and three are really sort of secretarial in a sense. Uh, That's the full cycle. Uh, after the deployment and after deflation, it goes back to being armed automatically. So if, again, if I were out searching for somebody, um, I could pull this trigger right now and it would go right back through that whole exact sequence. Um, you're never left unprotected. Uh, the other nice thing about that is, actually this is a cool trick that one of the CMH guys taught me. The ability to step out of that thing. The other nice advantage here, and anybody that owns a current airbag, um, this is one of those sort of like variables that uh, that, always drives me insane, that uh, everybody complains about is the required special folding practice. This is basically, we've patterned it to be loose on the inside, so it's really easy to stuff. It's really quick, and there's no special folding. We've actually tried, especially folding it, to try to you know to see how we could get it to um, 
of twist up, and we've had zero luck with being able to uh, to trick the system. I reached down, and the other thing is that the valve on that housing sits inside this pocket here. The, the fan housing is right here. You can actually see it in this illustration. So I can reach down there and open up that valve manually from the outside of the pack. Um, another cool aspect of the thing to get that last 10% of air. We're running a uh, we're running a regular coil zipper instead of the breakaway tooth zipper for a bunch of different reasons. One of the, like the two primary are because tooth zippers um, on packs tend to break more often, and anybody that uh, has been carrying around, particularly the BCA ones, seem to break often, and the and the uh, snow pulse ones that kind of run that circle tend to break often. About 10% of the ones I see on the mountain are splitting open uh, unintentionally. Uh, so coil zippers are stronger. They also run faster. So if somebody screws it up and leaves that slider um, up on the upper part of the zipper, um, at most temperatures, most normal ski temperatures, we can actually push the slider all the way over, uh, you know, in addition. So it just reduces one of those, another one of those aspects of user error. So I've just repacked it. Um, it's ready to go again. It's actually still armed, so I could pull the trigger um, with no issues. I could also just zip this thing away, get back in, you know, whatever vehicle I need to get into, and it's and it's essentially deactivated for for travel. Um, and I didn't have to take anything out of my pack. I didn't have to, you know, find a cylinder. I didn't have to find, you know, anything to to react, activate it. Um, Nathan, did 